We're here in Seattle, one of my favorite tracks. This bank at this track is insane. We're here for Formula Drift. I'm here with the RTR team and I'm really excited. This is probably the best I've felt in a long time. Because of the time change, I got well over eight hours of sleep, which is like the first time I've done that in probably months. The weather's beautiful, it reminds me of my favorite time of year in Connecticut. It's gotta be like 60, 70. I feel alive, I feel energized, and I'm ready to go out and shred these cars. They do fantastic at this track. A lot of things that I've been having a hard time with, I don't think will really be an issue with this track, and I'm stoked to just go turn lap. It's a condensed event, so uh, it'll be what's usually in three days, in two days, because there's no prospect going on here. So the schedule's gonna be fast paced, there's gonna be a lot of driving, but I'm gonna do my best to bring you guys along for the weekend and have some fun. In the typical track walk or track scoot, as I should say, just kind of going, getting familiar with all my marks on the track, any weird little bumps or divots in track that could upset the car. That way, when you go out for the first lap, it is in a uh, complete sight unseen scenario and you can kind of be familiar with what's going on. One other new thing that I think is very cool, in the driver's meetings we're always trying to explain how difficult it is to see the zones in the smoke when you're in the chase position. And they did something new for us and they actually put course markers in the sky. So I'm hopeful that in the chase position where we normally would have a hard time seeing, we'll be able to see these markers because they're up in the sky. I'm very excited for that and to see kind of how it helps us have better chases and put on the best show possible. Also, I forgot to show you guys, but BC actually got me some of these markers from FD for use at the compound. So we're gonna have some of these bad boys to play with back home. Welcome back to the pits for uh, practice. I just had to stop by and admire my buddy's car. One of my favorite S chassis on the planet. Super tastefully done, beautiful paint. It's the whole deal. This thing's gangster. I think it's got a sequential SR in it too, so I love this thing. All right, I know you guys like it when I do the voiceover on the run, so I'm gonna do my best to talk you through each one. This is my first run out, a little bit timid of an entry at the bank. You'll notice I entered a little slow, and I'm a little low around the bank. The main issue though I had throughout practice, what you'll see is up here, you see those pylons? I'm trying to rotate the car way too early. And what that does is it makes me have to kind of straight shoot out to that next zone. This is an awful lap, I'm just showing you kind of for context, so as you see my laps later on throughout the day, you can kind of understand and see the improvements. This was my first chase of the day. Uh, I actually felt pretty good. I was following Reader, and uh, our cars are really, really fast. And especially in practice, we were super hooked up. So like, my car just kept on wanting to drive to the inside of him, so I had to do quite a few handbrake checkups. Um, his car ended up getting faster later on, but I usually wouldn't have to do that many. But I was actually pretty happy with this chase. Not a lot of stuff I would have changed um, for my first chase out there. I felt like I hit my marks, and I put the car right where it needed to be. He had a few little bobbles, but everyone kind of did, because it was the first runs out there on track. Rubber's starting to get laid down and the track is starting to rip up in different areas. On this lead, uh, I want to again point you to the issue of me rotating the car too late. This entry is a little bit better, still a little low, leaving a little to be desired on the bank. But you'll see, looking for those pylons, I'm grabbing the handbrake way too early. And then I'm having to like straight shoot and then understeer trying to rotate the car again. Because you're on the throttle, the car doesn't really rotate. Here, I rotated the car a little bit later, but still, same problem. All right, final thoughts after the end of the first practice. The cars feel so sick on this track. I feel really confident, especially in the infield, just kind of working up confidence. Because I feel like I'm entering with so much speed on the bank. A lot of people start with looser setups. So one thing that we've been doing is we've been kind of starting with our final like competition winning setup. So to get the confidence needed to really just bury the throttle like that, uh, takes a lot. But I feel like that last run was getting me closer to where I need to be. Definitely some little hiccups and stuff that I talked through that you guys probably understand and see. Um, but we're gonna dial the car in, get it to where I can comfortably put the car in the places that I need to put it, and uh, go out and have some fun. But I'm feeling great, I love the weather, I love the energy out here, and I'm stoked for qualifying. I'm going to take you guys along for the second practice session. Let's look at how this entry is. Uh, a little bit better, a little bit higher on the wall. Uh, maybe a little bit lower. I don't know. Let's see. Do I handbrake later? Do I rotate the car later? Yes. Much later. You can see less understeering stuff going on. Still need to grab the handbrake a little bit more where I shouldn't have needed to, but real good looking through this input section. I like that downshift. I was pretty happy with this run. Just a little bit more to be desired on the bank. Uh, 
Oh, this run, I went to enter and felt some weird stuff going on. So I straightened out and called the run. I got a total of 10 of my 12 laps. I definitely wanted another lead before qualifying. Not feeling as good as I uh, could have. I knew that something was weird up in the burnout box because I could hear like a thud every time I got on the gas. Uh, went to enter, I probably shouldn't have even gone that far. I knew instantly something was wrong, so I just shut it down in the bank. It wasn't worth plowing the car in the wall over it. And sure enough, uh, there was actually a broken heim in the rear that must have just died from fatigue. Um, so I could have very well gone into the wall. I'm glad I made the call, but I missed those last two laps of practice. So we need to do a mile on qualifying. I know based on my last practice lap that I still have some left on the table to improve on. However, I'm not gonna go out and try to be a hero. I did that last year and that's when I wound up uh, making a major mistake and washing the whole run. I wanna go higher on the bank, but I'm gonna try to just work up there gradually. Last time I changed my whole entry style. I changed everything for qualifying because I wanted to be the top qualifier. I'm just gonna go put the points on the table, do a solid run, and feel good about competition tomorrow. Adam LZ, always a crowd favorite, let's see. LZ in the AutoZone, Pennzoil, Mustang, RTR, Spec 5D. Here we go, the signature fade. Let's see if he can fade on into this outside zone. Good initiation there from Adam LZ. Very cool. You can see locked and loaded. Or set up. He's going to be a little bit higher on that bank. And then comes up shallow on that second outside zone. Definitely gets into that third outside zone. Tighten it up at the second marker. Now transitions into that last and final outside zone. So again, could have been a little higher on the bank and definitely missed the second outside zone, but liked what he did. All right, now let me walk you through my lap from the in car. Uh, entry, pretty average. I was definitely uh, up there on the bank. Again, still leaving a little bit left on the table. But the biggest thing you'll notice from the in car, you see that sun glaring through? Uh, I'm gonna blame half driver error, half sun for me making the same mistake of grabbing the handbrake too soon and not having the momentum to make it out to that zone. I felt like I salvaged the rest of the run pretty decent, but when you mess up that first zone, it kind of screws up the rest of the track. You can see how blind it is in this area. A lot of drivers were struggling with it, and I wound up later putting banners to block the sun because it was so difficult to see, uh, but definitely a new challenge. Uh, he's gonna be around, and there it is, 77, so another 77. You can see uh, the style of 24. Not the run I wanted to do. I felt better on the bank than I had in any other run. Uh, but unfortunately, coming off the bank, I'm not going to blame the sun entirely. I just handbraked a little too early. On that bank, it feels like you're flying. you got to start slowing down. And what that did is set me up to miss outer zone two. I felt like I did pretty good for the rest of the uh, track. I was pretty happy with my zones. I just completely missed that one and kind of screwed myself there. All right, now it is competition day. I'm going to go and just try to have some fun and practice. At E-Town, I did exactly that. I pushed some doors in. I just drove without a care. The guys are amping me up to do the same. I bent some tie rods from pushing in people's doors. It's all good. I need to get comfortable with running shit. Dwater is an amazing driver, and I'm going to be going up against him, and i got to give it my all. Chasing first, which I actually like. So uh, time to go make practice count. All right, now I'm going to analyze some of my runs from the second practice session. Uh, coming up on the uh, bank, entered a little bit low. Uh, I think I ended up working my way up a little bit, but what you'll notice here is I handbrake and rotate the car much later, and I'm able to kind of throw some big angle and drive out of the zone with no weird handbrake corrections. I was pretty happy with the, the rest of this track. One thing I did start to notice though is on a fresh set of tires, infield was real easy, but uh, on my second lap, I started to lose grip, um, and I would actually be out of tire like halfway through the infield. Um, this is me chasing Forsberg. One thing that I struggled with is when I was chasing people, everyone entered a lot slower and then kind of powered into the corner, where I would just go in guns blazing and then slow down, so it would kind of throw off my line. Uh, but you'll see coming in here, I actually ended up hitting Forsberg. He would decel in that area and wound up getting penalized for it and losing his battle in competition. Um, we're allowed to handbrake there to rotate the car, but not drastically slow down the car because the uh, chase car needs to be able to be confidently on power. And uh, if you brake check there or if you slow down, that ends up messing them up. Uh, this chase, I'm following Taguchi. Uh, he's got a real good run. Again, kind of weird, like I'm used to entering a lot faster, but I was able to get comfortable with driving up in, into him. A um, couple little corrections. Uh, I think he actually lifted there mid-bank. Uh, it's hard to see from this angle, but on the cell phone footage, I was able to see it. I was really happy with my transition timing. Um, I never overrode the car in that same scenario right there. Uh, in E-Town, I overrode the car because I was too scared to get back on throttle. But um, that's one thing I definitely dialed in at this round. And I don't think I spun out the car once on transition. Time to go out for my first battle with Masayama. Felt really great the last two runs of practice. Go do the same thing. 
I'm confident that I can get this in the bag, so let's go do it. Adam LZ on that start line. Watoro Masayama will be leading qualified seventh. Adam LZ qualifying 26th. Let's see what we got here from Masayama and LZ. All right, leaving that start chicane. Let's see if the fade comes in hot. Watoro Masayama, big angle from him. Adam LZ needs to close that gap. He does have the angle, not the proximity. Now into that second half. Oh, very shallow and outside zone two in the power alley by LZ. Now into that inside clip. Big angle there from Masayama. He does exceed it, he drops that tire off course. LZ definitely throws it down the latter portion of the track. But uh, LZ, again, big gap off the start. And then coming to that power alley is very shallow and outside zone two. All right, chasing Masayama. I knew from my spotter notes that he would be really fast. But it all pretty much ended right here. I did a weird, like, I, I clutch kicked, but I should have stayed in it long before hand breaking. I just kind of messed up my timing and did a weird, like, partial clutch kick, and then I ended up establishing a gap. I drove through the smoke here and was able to catch up, kind of by chopping line, um, but I was definitely at a huge disadvantage by establishing so much of a gap on that bank and then trying to play catch up for the last section of the lap. I messed up my initiation and kind of um, hesitated. So when I went to initiate, I kind of straightened, caused a the gap there, and did the best that I could to keep it together. But um, I just got to do a perfect lead and hope that it messes them up. Yeah, heck yeah, focus on that perfect lead. Um, great job, too. And behind him in the smoke, still staying committed through the power alley and all that. So uh, right now, focus on that lead. Uh, you had some baller lead runs a minute ago, so let's see it again. Here we go, Adam LZ now got the clean air, the AutoZone Mustang RTR Spec 5 initiates. Good initiation there, and look at Masayama, he talked about that proximity. He does close it, but not all the way. It takes a very shallow low line on the bank into the outside zone too. Masayama just buried in the smoke. Adam LZ takes a wide line around that inside clip. Watch him transition here, Masayama. Wow, good composure there by Masayama. Oh, talk about hitting that wall, you talk about it, and LZ does it. Bumper budget, those RTR boys eating up those bumpers. I tried to give it all in my lead. You'll probably hear and see on this. It was probably my highest bank ride. Probably my most throttle equipment out of any of the runs. Literally, foot was through the floor. It's kind of hilarious. Um, everything felt great. Uh, did I, what did I do here? Did I miss the zone? No, I, I got the zone. I actually did really good through all the infield and everything. The only thing is I uh, was pretty much out of tire here and didn't account for that, so I washed out a bunch, missed that inner clip, and then didn't have the dig to avoid hitting the wall. I guess given that the beans on the bank, filled my tires faster. Oh, Ray, you're going to be stoked on that data. I swear to God, dude, I was floored all the way from entry all the way down to the bottom of the bank. Like, literally foot to the floor, 100% TPS, baby. Well, both of you guys had the same problem at the exit. Um, I honestly, your your chase run on the bank was better, but borderline might even both of y'all have an incomplete on the lead by straightening before the end by hitting outer zone four wall and straightening. I gave it to him. He won. Great job on everything, though, bud. Thanks. Wish I didn't fuck up that entry, but it is what it is. I knew that Masayama had a clutch kick entry. I'd been used to handbraking all day. I didn't get a chance to experiment with what it would feel like clutch kicking in, and I knew that I couldn't handbrake and slow down too much or establish a gap. Had a weird hesitation there, and that kind of established the gap that I had in my chase run. Stayed in it and held it together and could have sealed the deal with my lead run or at least got it one more time, but because I went to the wall at the end, I'm assuming that's why they ruled in his favor. The team was pretty convinced we'd have it one more time since we both made a lot of mistakes, but um, part of the game is you just gotta seal the deal, and I didn't do that enough, so. It sucks, but uh, I, was, I felt really good in the car, and coming off St. Louis, I didn't feel the best. E-Town, I felt really good, and this event was a good one. I didn't have any weird Mustang things going on. The car did exactly what I asked of it. Just me that needs to get better. You know, hindsight's 2020. I know that in practice now, I definitely should have experimented with some clutch kick entries instead of just handbraking all the time. Uh, and in fact, that's what I did pretty much all last year in my S15, but I've also kind of screwed myself in the past by trying stuff that's different and then winding up going into the wall, so try my best to stay with what I know, but then th that second hesitation can just screw you. So, it sucks, it was close, but I don't know if you guys can see it, but every round I leave with new stuff in my arsenal with this car. It just sucks that the only way to learn is by doing these events. So even if we had the time to go do a practice day somewhere, none of the tracks are the same compared to FD when you have all the rubber laid down and you're going against different cars with different driving styles. 
The only way to learn is by doing it. You notice I'm wearing the Chelsea shirt because your boy got the win. I'm so proud of Chelsea. The energy in the team is amazing. I do want to say, not to bring the mood down, videos like this, I don't want to upload. I am so proud and passionate about my driving that when I do have off weekends, it's tough for me to make a video out of it. What I just try to remind myself is just like I did with BMX and just like I had so many haters in the beginning when I barely knew how to ride. Those videos are awesome to look back at. You can see my journey and I know that they inspired many people. So hopefully you guys seeing me with these struggles and watching me when I know I'm going to overcome them is a lot more realistic of a story than me hopping in a new car going and killing it right off the rip. When I originally joined Formula Drift, it was for a challenge and I'm getting exactly that. It's not easy, it's not a walk in the park, but I'm in this because I want to drive with the best, I want to learn, that's exactly what I'm doing. Next track's a new track. No one's got data, no one's got set up. I've heard it's fast and it flows. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Appreciate you guys watching this video. Appreciate everyone that came out that I got to talk to and meet. And I'll see you guys soon.